Today I'm going to talk about uh, how much I hate the term being realistic. I love air, air quotes um, on my podcast. I can't see that, Papa. Can you move it over here? And uh, it really hit me this or oh, recently in the past few days uh, that that was something that just rubs me the wrong way. And I think probably so much of it comes from 25 years of talking to people about a very unrealistic pursuit, the pursuit to be a successful model and to think outside of the box of what that could be and what the possibilities are and how so many times, um, especially parents, which I understand to a degree, I really do, but I'm also somebody that I wouldn't be doing any of what I'm doing right now. I wouldn't have the life that I'm living had I put being realistic at the top of my priorities. It, the bottom line is it just wouldn't have happened. And I can also look at the wall in front of me or scroll through Instagram and look at the, the 20 year history of our company and know that um, being realistic of about what you're you, you know you could potentially do could be the very first the very thing that stops you you know i don't necessarily think steve jobs or walt disney or oprah winfrey had being realistic at the top of their priority list and you know we have to be open to things uh i looked up the word you know i love the dictionary because i want to know exactly what it said realistic means interested in, concerned with, or based on what is real or practical. Practical is another word that is not my favorite word. And real, what is even real now? You know, we have reality TV that isn't real. Um, we have what used to be the hard and true path in previous generations. You get a job at a factory at, or whatever the company is and you're there till the end of time. Or you get a four year degree and you get a job in the area that you've studied and the rest is history. Well, all of that is out the window today. We live in a very different time where things are changing rapidly and um, sadly people don't have that security that they used to have. So my interpretation of that is you have nothing to lose to not be realistic, to think that it could be way more than you could ever imagine, or that even though it hasn't been done before, it doesn't mean that you couldn't do it. Um, we had something happen this weekend that, you know, we've been doing this a long time, and when you scout someone, not everyone's gonna be like, oh yes, I wanna do it. You know, people ask us that question a lot. How many times do people say, leave me alone, or I'm not interested, and, you know, the percentages are on the smaller side, but still it happens. We never take it personally. Look, this is not for everyone. But this weekend, we went and had lunch in an area of St. Louis called The Grove. And as we were driving, we are trying to find parking. And so we kind of had to drive around a little bit to find the spot. And during this time frame, there's this great pizza place called Firecracker Pizza. And they have a mural on the side of uh, their building and there were kids taking selfies and taking pictures by this mural. Four girls and a guy. So we see this guy. Jeff said, did you see the guy? I said, yes, I saw the guy. Why does it always happen when we're not trying to, <laughs> to you know, whatever. It just happens. So we were like, well, we'll come around, let's get a better look at him because when you're driving, it's really hard to see somebody, but we could see his height his frame, he looked like he was cool. We come around, he's walking away with his girlfriend from taking this picture. And we're like, he's cool, so I'm digging for my card so that I can not scare him um, and so that he knows that we're legit. I mean, he, I would guess that he was late teens, early 20s maybe, wouldn't you say, college age? And I mean, what's scary about me? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna scare you. I say, excuse me. Um, can I give you this card? We scout models. 
I had to cut to the chase. We were in a car and he's walking. And the look on his face initially was smile. And he literally physically went to kind of start walking towards the car just to take my card. I, could, I couldn't hear what the girlfriend said, but the girlfriend was not happy. And then the other girl behind, who was actually a taller girl, um, literally grabbed his arm and pulled him away and they kept walking down the, the sidewalk. And I, of course, yelled out, I was like, you should never let somebody take your potential opportunity from you. And they just kept walking. To me, it was like a physical, afterwards I, was, I said, I wish I could have shot that whole thing because visually, just to show, because to me, it literally represents what we've seen for years of people having a dream, uh, an aspiration to do this and literally having friends and family, no, you don't want to do that. That's not realistic. Let me let me grab your arm and pull you down the sidewalk. And who knows? What if that guy could have gone on to do something really cool in this? Or what if it opened up travel to him that he'd never experienced? The list is endless of what it could be, but sadly, family, friends, culture, society can sometimes grab you and pull you down the sidewalk and say that's not realistic. People who urge you to be realistic generally want you to accept their version of reality, which is true. I was in a relationship for a long time where the person always said to me, I'll believe it when I see it. And I hated it because my way of thinking is I have to see it first to then help make it manifest through work, effort, opportunity, etc. So first you have to see it. Uh, and for anybody out there pursuing whatever you're pursuing, you just have to keep your nose to the grindstone and know maybe people aren't going to see it until after the fact. And then I'll tell you too, they'll be like, oh, we were always in your corner and we knew you could do it, even though that's probably not true. I'd rather walk by faith and not by sight. It's important to write down vision. We have well-meaning parents that sometimes would say you need to do X, Y, Z. And then you can also see the parents that over time maybe shift their thinking and say, I can't, no matter what I expected or what I thought was going to be, I wouldn't be serving my child right to not let him or her try this, experience it, learn more about themselves, see the world, um, whatever it may be. A great quote from Will Smith, being realistic is the most common path to mediocrity. Being realistic um, it really can be interpreted as being uh, on the cynical side of things. Definitely glass half empty. I am a glass half girl, half full girl. And, did, and am I saying that it always served me and everything ended up happening the way that I wanted to? Of course not. <laughs> There's been many a struggle and many a uh, thing to overcome. But on the other side of it, to be at this place at this time and now to be opening up um, ideas to even more things. I was so inspired last week when Kathy Lee Gifford, after 11 years on the Today Show, I believe she's 65-ish, around that age, I don't know exactly, uh, I watched her for a million years when she was on Regis and Kathy Lee, and then when she came back to the Today Show, I was excited. I just think she's funny, and um, I just like her. And I watched her last show. I recorded all the shows that were going to be, you know, her um, final shows because we were in Georgetown speaking, which was amazing, by the way. Um, and. I, was, I, was, I watched it over the weekend and I literally cried, but I was so inspired by her because she was like, I've been doing this for this many years and now she's moving to a new city, she's starting this whole new chapter of her life and she's 65 years old and just sees where some people are saying I'm going to retire. 
her attitude was, now I'm going to do something else. Or now I have something new that I want to do. And I completely was inspired by her and feel the same way. And, you know, looking at it from a realistic standpoint would probably stop her in her tracks. But um, I just don't think we're supposed to live that way. I think that we're supposed to keep thinking big. It's all perception. It's all perception. You know, years ago, Jeff uh, was with the boys at the mall. I think they were like at a, um, what did they used to, like an arcade, back when you would go take the kids to the arcade. And then they were going to a movie. And he scouted this girl who was working at the Dairy Queen. And absolutely beautiful girl. Didn't have a lot. Um, we took her to New York and I remember everything that she had was in her backpack and she'd never, as she said, had girl clothes. And so even at that time in our life where we are, we didn't have a lot, we went to Forever 21 and bought her clothes so that she could feel great when she went to New York. And the response was very overwhelmingly positive for her, um, from Michael Kors to Calvin Klein. But the challenge was her perception, her skew of being realistic it made more sense for her to talk herself out of it. And really, when we witnessed it in hindsight, and we knew it was happening at the time, family and friends were being very discouraging to her about that this can't really be real and you need to do this and you need to, you know, whatever and she never did anything beyond that and we saw her a few years later at a store and then literally maybe four years ago um, we took our kids to the olive garden because they loved the olive garden and and she was a server there and not that that is a bad thing at all she's a hard-working girl a sweet girl but all i could think about that whole time was, what if you hadn't talked yourself out? What if you didn't listen to those voices? What if you thought, you know what? I'm not gonna be realistic at this point. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain, so I'm just gonna go for it. And I hope in your life, if you have those things, don't talk yourself out of it. Um, I, like many of you, I'm sure, there's like love the books of Rachel Hollis. I watched Girl Wash Her Face. I read Girl Wash Her Face and I just got her new book and she's going to be at a conference soon um, that I'm thinking about attending. And so this morning I went online just because I wanted to, I went on YouTube to see some of the things that she'd spoken about and I thought it was really interesting because I stumbled across this, which I thought was relative to what I'm talking about today. And she talked about how as things were really accelerating in her career, and she started speaking at a lot of universities, students would come up and she said, almost everybody would ask the same question. How did this happen? What's, what's, what's like the magic secret that got you to this point? And I love what she said. She said, um, as she observed other people, when someone told them they couldn't do it, they would listen and walk away. And in her case, which I relate to, she said, I would not take no for an answer. That's the difference. She said, I've never once believed my dreams were someone else's to manage. And I give a big giant amen to that. I feel the same. Um, Seth Godin is an author that I've read many of his books. I follow him, I think he's just brilliant. And he said that Believe that giving up is the same thing as being realistic. You don't want to give up. People give up too soon. Um, being realistic, uh, I'm not saying in all aspects of your life you shouldn't be. When it comes to your dreams and your goals and those things, no, <laughs> don't be realistic. You'll end up at a place that's magical. And even if you don't, what you'll end up gaining in the process is well worth it. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, it's been a joy spending time with you on these Mondays. Make it a great week and I'll see you next Monday.